Hey what is up guys, this is not been at games and today we're going to talk about Kingdom Hearts 0.2 precisely uh fragmentary no a passenger fragment I think. Uh it's always a little title that I keep forget forget, but this takes place uh, obviously at the end of the Kingdom Hearts uh, Birth by Sleep, you haven't played, this is uh, pretty much Aqua, one of the main characters of that game, and uh, yeah. So pretty much you tell, this game tells us about Aqua, how uh, she's, well we know she was stuck in the realm of darkness, but how she handled, handled, uh, handled the, the enemies and how she survived all along, and all along, uh, all along, Jesus, and um, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, sadly, the game is actually very short. It's only a three hours, uh, 20 minutes. That's the highest highest difficulty that I played on uh, available at first. It was the proud mode, that's hard mode-ish. Uh, when you finish the game on either any of the modes, you unlock critical mode, that's the hardest and highest difficulty available in the game. Uh, but you have to clear the game uh, the game once in any difficulty, but I cleared, I cleared it on proud mode, so yeah, I'm happy about uh, about that. I'm sure uh, I'm used to play all the Kingdom Hearts on, you know, I'm, I was used to play on normal, I decided to play all of them on uh, hard mode, and you know, it's, you get good at the game, obviously, yep. but there are always going to be better players than you, obviously, but it is what it is. But anyways, uh, basically this uh, tells us about uh, Aqua uh, that she was remembering. Uh, remember every she was remembering. She was going. She was going through all these phases uh, about her, or she was trying to not get uh, being controlled by the darkness, or getting sucked into the darkness, and you know. Uh, there's a uh, we see Terra, Ventus. Those are two other main characters that we see on Birth by Sleep, and they're very important characters. They're uh, key wielders, and yeah. So pretty much this takes place at the end of, like I said, uh, at the end of Birth by Sleep, and between Kingdom Hearts, in the middle of Kingdom Hearts one, and at the end of Kingdom Hearts one. Uh, because at the end of this chapter, you see Riku, young Riku, going to. You know, uh, at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1, there's Riku and King Miki closing the door of Kingdom Hearts or the Realm of Darkness. Um, and Riku was young in this chapter uh, at the end of the game. And that's pretty much what happens, you know. Uh, that's what the game is. Uh, basically, it's pretty much what was going on with uh, Aqua. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, obviously, uh, we're going to talk about with the graphics. Obviously, the graphics are incredible. They change, uh, they change the engine, and they're going for Unreal 4 engine, and those graphics are so beautiful. Obviously, I cannot wait for uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, but goddamn those graphics though. Um, the fighting style is pretty much the same, like the others except well it's pretty much similar to Kingdom Hearts 2 uh, you see the mana bar when you use uh, the uh, cure casting spell it takes all the blue mana bar it goes into a pink phase that you have to wait until it goes uh, down and fills into a blue bar again and uh, or you can actually gather uh, blue bubbles that you see when you kill enemies that uh, it gives you mana bar back and there's uh, the health bar, obviously, and there's the drive bar. Obviously, the drive bar is different in this game. Um, but she has a drive bar. Uh, she has a uplink ability. Is where she. It's pretty much like a Sora, uh, when she turns into a. You know when she when Sora goes into a. Keyblade Master transformation, whatever it is. And he, you press triangle to do this, uh, those abilities, and he, he's very overpowered, and well, he's very strong. Well, he becomes stronger, and in Kingdom Hearts 2, and pretty much that's what it is with Aqua, except that she uses her own abilities, and she doesn't have more key blades like Sora does, and uh, yeah. 
so pretty much we the only characters that we see basically that uh, goes into your party is King Nick. Uh, the other characters uh, you see it's uh, Terra and uh, Riku at the end of uh, the chapter. Uh, like I said, it takes place at the end of uh, Kingdom Hearts One, and well, it takes place in between the end of Birth by Sleep, in between Kingdom Hearts and One, and the end of Kingdom Hearts One. And um, so yeah, that's pretty much it about this game. Basically, it's very short. That's the thing. It's not meant to be a whole game. It's meant to be uh, just a little chapter. To entertain us before they release or they gave a date for Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, uh, I will give it a 4 out of 5. I mean, fighting style graphics are fucking amazing. The only problem was the short or the during time of the uh, gameplay. Obviously, like I said, it's, uh, it, it was not meant to be a whole game. Um... It was pretty much only to show us what was going to be at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 3 and how the graphics are changed to from the first to this one. And uh, there's a actually when you finish the, the chapter with her, with her with Aqua, uh, you go into another cinematic with uh, where you see grown up uh, Riku, Kairi. And King Nikki, obviously, there, there's uh, he's there, and there's Sora. So basically, uh, it takes place uh, the epilogue. It takes place at the end of uh, 3D. If you haven't played, it's the one that came out in the uh, Nintendo 3DS. It's uh, yeah, it, it's basically in the 2.8 version, so you can actually play it. But it takes place at the end of uh, 3D uh, Dream Drop Distance, and you can see that Riku is still the master, and Carrie has to train to become uh, one of the key wielders because they have to gather all the seven key wielders. There's uh, three right now, and three that we know that are kind of in rest. There's uh, Thera, Terra, Aqua, and Ventus. Uh, there's Sora, Kairi, and Riku. Who's the seven? I don't know. Unless King, Mi King Mickey counts as a one. So I guess King yeah, Mickey, yeah. maybe. Enough. But I don't know. Um, yeah, that's been what you we see in the epilogue. We see Sora at the end of uh, uh, the uh, epilogue. Uh, he has to figure it out some stuff. And Master Jensen, uh, Jens, 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 Jesus, Jens gives him a mission, and basically he goes to uh, the Colosseum. Uh, world so that's pretty much hercules uh, hercules oh god hercules um world and it's i think it's going to be the first world we're going to visit on kingdom hearts 3 but don't quote me on that um probably 100 percent wrong but anyways i think that they're going to see the coliseum uh but yeah uh it's freaking good the graphics are insane I cannot wait for Kingdom Hearts 2 3. When it's going to be released, I will give 2019 or probably 18. 18, like late 18, pretty much. October, November, November, December. I think it's those months that the game is going to be released. So, yeah, it's still a long way. But anyways, this is going to be it for this video. So yeah, the game was fun, but short. That was a problem. But it was not meant to be a whole game. But anyways, so this is going to be it. So thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.